going live now. Start the streaming. Yeah. <clears throat> YouTube streaming and uh, what else? Um, FB and uh, Link. No. I uh, know only YouTube. Okay. Are we on recording now, Dr. Renuka? Uh, yes, I'm going to share the link of YouTube here in the chat. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Sorry. Good day, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. So welcome to this mid-year conference uh, meeting. And I'm very glad that you all are available today. Uh, I must thank Ernesto for giving this name. Initially, I called it half year uh, celebration, but he said we should make it as a conference. So thank you. And we have many, many good, uh, uh, respected uh, uh, authors and uh, researchers and presenters today here to speak about their uh, subject. And I'm also glad that uh, we will be listening from our coordinators today. So it's not me today at all. It's all about our coordinators and they are going to present this program. So I'm very glad that you are all here and let us start. So I will share my screen. <clears throat> mm. So first, just only half uh, our uh, housekeeping uh, rules or announcements. This session will be recorded and it is also live on YouTube. I have shared the YouTube uh, uh, link, so please help yourself there. Introduce yourself through the chat function so that we can all uh, know each other. Provide your name and email address. So anyone who is interested in you can contact. And uh, this chat will be saved and uh, presentation and recording will be distributed to everyone. Okay, so thank you very much. So as I already mentioned, it is a media conference and today we are going to be here together for two hours. And this is how we will spend our two hours today. Uh, we will be looking at uh, our new web pages and then uh, uh, we will have our social media champions talking about their roles and how they feel about being here. Uh, as a <clears throat> then we will have our uh, social, uh, 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 social media profile. Uh, Okay, and a network profile that is there. Yes, I have forgotten, uh, like we haven't been able to uh, update our social media profile, so we'll have to cancel that. But however, we will be hearing from uh, Ashish about network uh, profile, which, is, which will be very interesting to all of you. And then we will hear about uh, talks, and they are from Sumeria Aikya, by, uh, and she will be talking about uh, SDGs for kids, and uh, Vena will be speaking about SDG interactions. Then we will have Lars uh, speaking about plenary guidance. And uh, finally, we have global resilience towards inclusive sustainable development from uh, uh, Francio. Uh, she will be talking about her conference. And then uh, Last but not least, we will have planting the seeds of gratitude for sustainable corporate social responsibility and quality of life from Ernesto. And 
Then we will have one minute video by the coordinators or one, they have made slides. So I'm very, very thankful to the coordinators, whoever has spent this time to and forward it to me. I've tried to compile. If I have forgotten anyone, please excuse me or please tell me and you can speak uh, without the slide maybe. And then I will speak about moving forward. And uh, if we have some time, I will discuss uh, some announcements. So let us start. So first of all, uh, I invited uh, Professor Irini to talk about, to give a keynote today. Uh, Professor Irini is actually the pioneer for this network in the sense of she visited UK for, and for the first time, I got an idea of developing a network. At that time, we had only the network, which was uh, for UK and Brazil only, but then we expanded the network to Latin America. And then, as you know, now we are global. So uh, she is one of the, founder maybe like a very, very supportive coordinator all the time uh, for this network. And she especially talks about today global warming scenarios, which are very important to understand. However, she has spoken into Portuguese and the talk is about 12 minutes. Okay. We are not going to listen her fully today, but we have, pro I promise you that next meeting we will listen her fully and she has also said that she will translate it in English and she will provide us another uh, video. So today we'll just uh, listen for, uh, to her for uh, two minutes and probably if anyone is there, I, I suppose uh, Ilio is here and he will be able to tell us in English. So Ilio, please help us with this. Okay, so I will now uh, stop this and play her video. Queria cumprimentar a todos e a todos. É, neste momento, eu quero agradecer de modo especial a doutora Renuka Takori, que tem sido uma grande parceira conosco na Rede Internacional de Pesquisa em Resiliência Climática. Uma grande alegria estar aqui com vocês. Hoje eu gostaria de falar de modo muito especial a, a respeito da nossa Rede Internacional de Pesquisa e como é que nós temos trabalhado através desta parceria que desenvolvemos com alguns países, eh, tanto da América do Sul, quanto da Europa e também alguns já da África. Eh, eu sou professora doutora Irene Carniato e falo da Universidade Estadual do Oeste do Paraná. Eh, também eu sou professora do programa de mestrado e do... Ok, uh, Elio, can you tell us, please? Sure, sure. I, I was writing, writing down to remember everything. So it's a very uh, great uh, honor to be here with you guys, and I will be translating. So Dr. Irini greets everyone. Uh, she thanks and congratulates especially Dr. Renuka for uh, her wonderful effort to bring us all together uh, and to do this amazing work. Uh, and she's a doctor and also a professor at West Paraná uh, University here in Brazil, south of Brazil. Is that all? Yes. 
Yes, thank you. We are going to listen to this full uh, presentation next week, uh, uh, sorry, in, in next meeting, uh, so that uh, with the uh, so that all can understand. And we were not able to make this uh, translation at this moment. So we will leave it for now. So thank you very much, Ilio, to help us out with this. And so now I will uh, for the presentation. And I will share the screen again. So today, uh, I'm very, very pleased to announce that we have our web pages and we have done some branding. Uh, so let me share that with you. So here it goes. Our batches, we have batches now. Uh, this is for a colored batch, this one in dark for a colored uh, background. And one we also have for white background. And uh, uh, we have a landscape logo as well. Again, uh, with uh, a dark background and with white background. And then we have a newsletter also branded now. Uh, and uh, uh, we have uh, this type of our uh, um, uh, first page. And then we have welcome page. Then we have monthly meetings we will discuss here. And then upcoming calls or presentations or projects, whatever it goes. So we have this as well. Secondly, we have PowerPoints now. So anyone who wish to uh, uh, use PowerPoints, please let me know. I will send you them. And it will be uh, all, like, if you want to represent from a network uh, point of view, then please use this. All these old materials are for us to use. So everyone, please feel free to ask me and we can use this. So these are, these are the just... Uh, snapshots of the PowerPoint. And then we have this web page. Here I have put the link for the web page. And uh, uh, okay, I have realized that I'm not recording this uh, session. So let me record it first. Let me stop and share, uh, record it. Okay, thank you. Yes, so uh, we have a web page. I can go to it, but I think uh, uh, you can all uh, later on have a look. Uh, so here in these uh, web pages, we have our front page, and then we have about research project. We have also join the discussion in the sense of we have all of our uh, social media links, what we offer, we have all of our coordinators and we will talk about the coordinators uh, profile today. And so you will know how wide we have uh, flourished. And so this is all about our website. So please feel free to later on, uh, whenever you have spare time to go and uh, look at the web pages. And you can also, uh, put them in your portfolio or anywhere, wherever you want to exploit it. Yeah, okay. So that is how you can use this. Uh, and we have this flyer also. So anyone who wants to use this flyer uh, in relation to any program which you are uh, thinking that it relates to network objectives, then you feel free to ask me and I will uh, send you this flyer. And now we will uh, ask our social media champions to talk about their role and how they feel uh, of being champions. So the first one is LinkedIn champion. Is Jose here today? I will stop sharing so we can hear everyone. Uh, is Jose here today? 
I haven't I haven't seen Luis. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, Jose, I don't think he is here today. So from Taiwan. Yeah. No, Jose is from uh, Brazil. Anyway. Okay, oh. tell about him. Uh, yeah, Jose is uh, definitely enjoying uh, his role as a LinkedIn champion because he posts it so much and he gets uh, many likes. Uh, however, he is very busy, so probably it is too early for him as well in uh, Brazil. So we have missed him, but he said he would speak. So never mind, we can go to next person. Um, and next is, okay, I will have to share this slide now. Okay, next is our charming uh, Beatrice uh, Dilaria uh, Shakiyama, and uh, she is here today. So, uh, do you want to speak about you as a champion? Um, hello, everyone. My name is Beatrice. I'm from Brazil, and I am our Instagram champion. And my role is to take care of our Instagram account, create posts about the sustainable development goals, the latest news about it, sustainability in general, and of course, about it. I also design posts of articles and websites related to it anyway. I offer my services as a champion because I wanted to be part of a global movement, inspiring others to do the same, as well as learn more about sustainability and acknowledge the issues of the world we live in. Besides, grow as a person and have different experiences. As a 15-year-old student, I believe that the sooner we try to make the world a better place, the longer we will live to see its beauty and humanity's greatest breakthroughs and creations regarding equality and well-being, therefore society itself. So I'm extremely thankful to Renuka and all of you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Biazri. You are the youngest one and we are very, very proud of you having here. So, and you are doing excellent job. Thank you. And we have here Twitter champion, Ibrahim Neha. Please, Ibrahim, if you are here, if you want to speak about yourself. Okay, not to worry. Ibrahim has already sent the uh, um, slide and he currently he is currently working for solar company building solar systems. He continues to collaborate with his PhD lab to develop building energy modeling courses and is planning a postdoc research study on city level simulations. He has previously worked on developing strategies for resilient housing using local materials in a circular economy model to manage exposure to uh, peak summer heat. This, works, uh, this work used energy plus. So he is working to extend his research to cities level. So he's still, uh, talking about his professional uh, journey here. And thank you very much. He has, he's also very engaging at Twitter and he's performing his uh, role very well. Thank you very much. Next, we have WhatsApp and Facebook champion. Um, and uh, Paula, uh, Paula is here, so I have not put her his video. He's, he has provided us a video as well, just in case if we do not have connections. So I would like him to speak by himself today. So here, please, Paula. The yes, yours. yes. Yes, thank you, Dr. Arenita Chakur, for conducting this event and providing a change for me, one of the global sustainable future network social media champions, to introduce myself. Actually, I'm a so Facebook uh, champion of Facebook and WhatsApp, so my role is to share the program of global sustainable future ne social network uh, through Facebook and uh, WhatsApp. 
So I will. Uh, I also would like to express my gratitude to all the participants who manage their time for attending our special event. I'm interested in engaging in this work since I find various relevances related to my job as a teacher of English as a foraging language. In doing the job, I frequently find my students struggling to adapt their professional lives and personal lives to SDGs. In addition, the globally current situation of the COVID-19 pandemic and the upcoming event of COP26 possibly can change the direction of lives. Being engaged within this network, I expect any opportunity to exchange ideas of integrating and implementing the word SDGs through a resilience curriculum of learning English in this very unprecedented world environment. Uh, I think that's enough for me. From me, Mr. Uh, Dr. Renuka, and thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. You are very enthusiastic, and I love this enthusiastic. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And here we have Dr. William uh, Asante, newsletter champion. He has been a very, very big support for me uh, in writing newsletters. So I welcome him and I believe he's here today. So if he wants to talk about himself. No. Yes, so he, he said that he wanted to offer this service as a champion to this network because it is a little contribution to support GSF uh, partnership, our network to grow, to become an influential global network in the area of sustainable development. He also see the task of managing the network is as enormous and cannot be accomplished by a single individual. Thank you. And he is passionate and willing to support in initiatives geared towards making the world a better place to live. And the network has this agenda. So thank you very much, uh, Asa, William. <clears throat> Here we have Ashish Kelkar and he is membership management champion. And he has been also a great, great support to me. Every morning I ask him how many members we have grown and he provides me the update. So here he is, he's present, and so he will tell, talk about himself. Well, uh, uh, I'm a member of Royal Tower Planning Institute, and uh, I've been a member for the last four years, and I have started my career uh, from there, and uh, I've reached a place where I can uh, set, uh, give my contribution to uh, this kind of a network, and uh, 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 it is. I feel very proud of uh, proud to do uh, this kind of a uh, uh, work, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm thankful uh, thankful for Renuka, Doctor Renuka, for having me here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ashish. You have done a great job, and you will uh, learn uh, further slides which show what he has done. And here we have Charles Charles Maz, uh, Mazhaz Hate. Uh, is he present here? No, so probably we can share this. Let me see uh, why it is not, uh, okay. Why there is no voice. Share sound. I am doing that. Okay, can you hear? Sorry, can can anyone confirm you can hear this? Yes, I can no, hear you. Renuka, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. No, not me, uh, the slide. No, not the sound from the video. Okay, let me try again. Did you click the did you click the share button for the audio in your Zoom? Yes, I did. Okay, let me do again. 
in the shared security function. My, my name is Charles Major Now it's, it's good. It's good, it's good now, Ray. Thank you. Thank Zimbabwe. you. I'm very grateful to be part of the GSF family as a network analysis champion. My main focus is to do both quantitative and qualitative analysis of our meetings and gatherings so as to improve our performance and impact on the global landscape. Thank you. My name is Charles Majors. Oh, sorry. From yes, so he is very, uh, he has just joined and uh, we will be looking at the quantitative and qualitative indicators and to understand how we are impacting uh, on the society or maybe on ourselves or however uh, we will try to understand what are the indicators and what impact we are making and that is what we are trying to do so if anyone have any suggestions they can forward it to me mm -hmm. and we have Ernesto as a development uh, um, a champion, organizational development champion, and he is here, so probably he can speak for himself. <laughs> okay, thank you, Renuka. That's the the slides I sent. I thought it will be just uh, projected. Thank you, and I reserve my time uh, later on for the plan that we prepared for the group. Thank you, and good day. Okay, I will read the slide then. And he is saying, it is an honor to be part of a unique organization called Global Sustainable Futures. It is one of the tremendous helps in the field of academic research and environmental sustainability. The noble purpose is to be in the forefront to call the action is to preserve life and sustain our nature to preserve future generation. In our small action in responding to and complying with these challenges, it is a timely for a global collaboration and action by those who have committed and live in its purpose and advocacy for another nature, uh, mother nature. So long live. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ernesto. He has also been a very great support for me in developing uh, these programs. So thank you very much. So now we will hear about the network profile from Ashish Kelkar. So yes, Ashish, the floor is yours. Yes, uh, for last, uh, I think one month, I'm a uh, uh, network professional, uh, 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 network management, uh, 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 coordinators management, uh, and uh, I'm doing this uh, 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 very uh, profoundly because uh, I think uh, uh, the more number of uh, people that I meet, the uh, more number of uh, uh, new coordinators that I meet, uh, it will be definitely helpful for my career as well as uh, uh, to this network. So I'm thankful for uh, to uh, Dr. Renuka for having me here as a uh, network manager. Thank you. Yeah, but you can tell about these uh, figures. Yes, uh, for uh, last uh, from one month, uh, we have uh, crossed uh, uh, 75 uh, 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 members and now we are 87 uh, countries as members. And uh, we have total 100, 410 members in all. And uh, uh, almost half are uh, male and half are females. And uh, here are... I have, sorry. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, so I can go through these slides maybe. Uh, okay. So uh, we have reached uh, 425 coordinators from 94 countries. This is today's statistics, today morning. Today's statistics, yes. And uh, when I try to uh, like Ashish has done all this analysis. I have just put the figures, uh, just the charts here. So when we look at the coordinators, like 94 countries is like half of the world. Half of the world is with us now. And yes. 
And you can see that we have the highest number from United Kingdom, 12.3 percentage. Yes. And then we have uh, second one is United uh, States, which is 5.8. And then we have, and if we count United Kingdom, Scotland and United uh, Kingdom uh, together, then we have quite a big number. Mm. Uh, so, and then we have also one or two people from each one of these countries. And that is so exciting. Like we have been able to represent someone there. And, and we have India as 7.2 percentage. And we have also a good number from Nigeria, which is 5.1. And we also have a good number from Brazil, which is 10.6. And actually for Brazil, I'm, I'm very grateful to Professor Irini uh, because she has already established this all. And, and that's how we are going forward. I think <clears throat> we are doing very well in six months time. Secondly, we looked at the SDGs also, and SDG versus SDGs in the sense of how many people have said about whether they want to work for SDG one out of the total number of what they have opted. So in this way, we have quite a good number here. And uh, especially uh, we have people from 11 and 13, which is the, the most important, the most important SDG. Because if we are able to control or address the problems or achieve the targets of these SDGs, then we will be having a synergic effect on many, many other SDGs. And that is what we want. And you can see this uh, analysis. It is so interesting. And here, uh, when I put them into economic and society and biosphere, uh, again, I would say that this diagram has already been uh, established by UN SDG people that this, there are the synergies for these three areas. And I have just put the numbers here. Have a look when you have the presentation with you. You will be surprised that how many our uh, coordinators work around the area of society in together. We have 838 people working for society. And that is such a great thing. And then we have half of these people also working for economy and half of these people working for biosphere. And we, with partnerships, we have only 142. So here you can see that it is quite a good number. And you can imagine that how much, how much great immense impact we can make through our activities if we all get together and work towards one aim, SDGs. And then we are also very proud actually here that we are doing, we, we haven't asked anyone about who is male or female, but we are uh, thinking of including in our questionnaire now. Uh, however, we just guessed, okay? So these are approximate numbers. And however, they are good numbers. And now we, are, we will be looking at uh, including more and more female and making it 50-50. Uh, not including, but maybe attracting uh, is to join us. And uh, we will make them 50-50. Uh, however, it is a good number, good number. Mm. And uh, then we have now, as we already started this program, our network was materialized to help uh, build capacity uh, for early career researchers. So it is no doubt that we have 50% of early career researchers. However, I'm very, very proud that we have uh, early career research 50% because they, are, they have innovative ideas. They have that enthusiasm to work. And I don't say that senior researchers don't have, but they are here again. We also have a good number of senior researchers to help us. In practitioners, that is a great thing. We are growing in practitioners. 
and uh, uh, we have students who are eager to learn from us. And so I think we have a good mix and we will try to make it balanced, uh, we, uh, balanced here. But however, I think we are uh, doing a great start. And then we have started uh, several global connections also. Uh, like we are now one of the uh, circle in uh, Future Earth and we are also uh, going to propose and uh, I have a meeting on 14th which will finalize us as a working group. Uh, we have also proposed uh, projects on one planet and as you see this uh, redec that is this first uh, symbol of is from Brazil, uh, from Professor Irini. We have a great support from her and we are already liaising with many projects with her. The supporters also uh, has expressed that they want to work with us, do some projects. So, and uh, uh, principles of, uh, for responsible management and education uh, uh, what, uh, has also expressed that they are going to present their uh, program to us in the coming meetings and that's how we are building our global attention uh, a global presence as well and now i will invite uh, sumeria aik and uh celebi kalkan to give that talk and they are going to talk about empowering children for the future of em by employing sustainable development goals and so I will stop here and I will allow them to give a talk. Hello from Turkey. Hello. Is there a problem about the voice? It is good? Yes, yeah. good, good. Okay. okay, hello from Turkey. I'm Dr. Sumeyra Ayuk. And I'm so excited and it is honor to, to be here with you. And before I said to Renuka, Dr. Renuka, I, I haven't uh, spoken English for a long time. So I'm so excited and Right now, I'm thinking that if I can uh, speak in English fluently right now with you guys, I, I couldn't speak English fluently. So uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, I'm sorry for my mistakes before my uh, presentation. Uh, I want to talk about myself before I want to introduce myself. I completed my doctoral thesis in the field of teaching Turkish as a foreign language at an early age at Hacettepe University in Turkey. Uh, the title of my thesis is Teaching Turkish as a Foreign Language at an Early Age, the Effect of Games on the Writing Skills. Uh, in this study, I designed 35 original games for supporting the holistic development areas of children on early age development. Uh, in 2020, I was a project manager under the European Union between June and October. Uh, in this project, I wrote a book called The Guide to Game and Gamification, of course, for children in the forest cycle. Uh, and in this book, I designed 20 original games that can be played in the open air, in the forest, of course. And uh, within the scope, by, uh, scope of my works, I uh, work with Celebi Kalkan, but uh, he is sorry because he isn't available right now. He has another program. Uh, I, I'm working with him. Uh, we are organizing workshops for children, for teachers, uh, for families, especially for mothers. My purpose with these works is I want to raise awareness about sustainable development goals and support children's development areas in a healthy way. Uh, with this studies, can I share my screen? It is possible now? I think yes. Mm. Is there any problem about my voice? It is good? Mm. Very good. All good, all okay. good. Perfect. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, I want to talk about today empowering. Sorry. Okay. Empowering children for the future by employing sustainable development goals. Of course, we all know the importance of the sustainable development goals for our future. And the universal and inclusive SDGs describe major development challenges for humanity, for all of us. 
Uh, the aim of these 17 SDGs is to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure uh, prosperity for everyone by 2030. To secure a sustainable, peaceful, prosperous, and equitable life on Earth for everyone now and, of course, in the future. To work together to ensure no one is left behind and to, uh, to respect the boundaries of our planet and create a world in which there is a prosperity and peace for all. They address a range of social needs, including education, health, social protection, and job opportunities while tackling climate change and environmental protection. The Sustainable Development Goals, for this, to achieve these goals, everyone must work together, such as countries, organizations, companies, governments, the private sectors, and of course, every human. This, with the respect to SDGs, all countries can be considered as developing and all countries need to take urgent action. It is so important here, take urgent action. Education for sustainable development, of course, is important, is vital, because education can and must contribute to a new vision of sustainable global development. To create a more sustainable world, individuals must become sustainability change makers. They require the knowledge, skills, values, attitudes that empower them to contribute to sustainable development goals. So, Education is vital for the achievement of sustainable development. Why is important uh, SDGs for children? Because changing the environmental, social, cultural, and economic structure seen on a global scale necessitates raising awareness in all segments of society. So, considering the whole life of the individual, childhood period is important in terms of preparation for life. At this point, Raising awareness in children about SDGs will contribute to raising individuals who are conscious of being beneficial to both the world and society. Children's development characteristics, their desire to discover to new, their curiosity to learn, their low level of anxiety, unlimited imagination, and creativity will enable these goals to be easily issued and effective social outcomes to be issued. For this purpose, uh, we are we, we wrote a book about SDGs for children, of course. It contains uh, 251 learning objectives, 68 original activities, and 92 key concepts for each SDGs. It designed to be relevant for all learners of all ages worldwide. It can be adapted to national or local context. And this book, teachers can use this book as a resource, early age learners, primary school children, teachers, and anyone interested in SDG. This is an example of our books. This is first page, for example, for goal one, no poverty. The purpose of all of these activities is to empower children and prepare them for the future, raise awareness about SDGs, reflect on their own actions, take into future social, cultural, economic, and environmental impacts from a local and a global perspective, participate in the social political processes, moving their societies towards sustainable development. The next chapter, uh, we, we can find there education, uh, learning, ad learning objectives uh, described in the cognitive, socio-emotional and behavioral domains. And this page, in order to inform the students, the children about related concepts, we can find here definitions of 90 key concepts. And this page, you can find here the cycle of the related goals. For example, for SDG1, no poverty and poverty in all its forms everywhere can be defined as the learner knows about causes and the impacts of poverty. And in this activity for developing uh, cognitive uh, development, activities that support cognitive development and with these activities, for example, thinking with diagrams, remembering, classification, completing, and these activities for socio-emotional development, 
with this uh, situation, imagination, motivation, respecting difference, collaboration, empathy. And these activities that support behavioral development, like model making, using technology, reinforcement, mm -hmm. and this page uh, that support design thinking, for example. And of course, for uh, no poverty activities, for uh, this first one, explore the problems caused by poverty, choose one of these problems, find solutions for this problem, share the solution you, can, you think is the most effective. And this calendar, uh, includes the relevant specific day and week. For example, 17 October, International Day for the Eradication of Poverty 2021. Thank you for your patience and uh, sorry for my mistakes. I'm so excited and uh, it is so, so, so good to be here with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Very interesting and very, very important work you are doing. Thank so, you. And your English is excellent. Do not, do not say that. that <laughs> you, you do not know that. It is excellent. Thank you. You are excellent. so kind. Thank and you. And very good presentation. And you have given us a very broad, but very specific information as well. So it is very interesting. I think it's not only kids, we also all need to know all this. <laughs> so thank you very much for that. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we have Venapal, Bongol Lane. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name properly, but uh, yeah, uh, she is a brilliant Vena here. We, uh, we have to listen to her. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, I was so impressed by her project and I wanted to share all this project with you. And so please, please Vena, take your floor. I will stop sharing this and you can share your slides. Okay, thank you. Yes, no, after you see me, but anyway, my screen is there. So this is an active uh, research website. It's already my third year of data collection. And I'm working with my third batch of uh, undergraduate students. You know? And uh, actually the original study, if you click here, it was done by the International Science Council. Uh, what they did, and we're being brought to the site of the uh, ISC, now, what they did was uh, they took four goals and they started looking at the interactions of the targets. There are 17 goals, 169 targets total, and that includes uh, well, targets and implementation targets. And um, basically, what we did was the, the nodes, circles, you can see here are the targets and the interactions between any two targets are the edges between any two nodes. And so we have a network. We have a network with 14,000 plus edges, 169 nodes. And my objective actually at the, in Europe um, at ISC, they studied only four goals. My objective is to study, make a, an exhaustive comparison and uh, I will click on the poster. You, you are free to download this, print it, whatever you want to do. Now, the poster, I am, uh, we're being brought to it. This is a poster. Uh, the scoring system is explained here. So take any two targets. They might be indivisible. That's a positive reaction. They might be consistent, zero, or they may be canceling. That's a negative reaction. And uh, this poster summarizes blue are the positives. They found a lot of negative uh, interactions just looking at four targets. Okay, uh, where are we now? I, I changed screens. Okay, we are back to my research screen now. And I will show you the query and study goals function. Uh, 
no? because we have been collecting data, we have been asking uh, respondents to uh, color the edges, compare the targets and uh, give a score. Uh, okay, all right. Let's look at, uh, say, goal eight, decent work and economic growth. That has 12 targets. I'll click on it. And then I will add the goal 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions, 12 targets. When I say generate graph, yeah, okay, it's a bit slow because it is free. Right now, uh, my website is free. It is built on the Heroku platform, uh, but Heroku tells me I can speed it up if I pay them seven US per month. I do not have any funding for this. Anyway, okay. We have blue and red circles. These are the targets. Uh, you may click, uh, let's look at something that is a negative edge. All right. This is blue and blue. There's an integral negative. Let's click on 16A. If you click, it says, strengthen the rest relevant national institutions, including through international cooperation for building capacity at all levels, in particular in developing countries, to prevent violence and combat terrorism and crime. Now that was flagged as a negative with 16B, click. Promote and enforce non-discriminatory laws and policies for sustainable development. Now, if you will click on the edge, you can see the explanation why it was flagged as a negative. He is saying, I think what he is saying is we need cooperation among countries that have the same situation. And uh, let's look for other negatives. You see, I am really more interested in the negative interaction because a positive interaction, target A, positive with target B, fine. But I want the negatives because you see, we have to fix the conflict before you can try to uh, no, 16, um, okay, 8.4, let's click. What is 8.4? Improve through 2030 global resource efficiency in consumption and production and endeavor to decouple economic growth from environmental degradation in accordance with the 10-year framework with developed countries taking the lead. Now, it's a con it conflicts with 16.8, click on that broaden and strengthen the participation of developing countries in the institutions of global governance. Now, here's why a respondent said it's negative. Negative three, very negative. He says, developed countries have different mindsets towards development. Many are unwilling to change and foster fair economic policies. Well, uh, Okay, <laughs> so that's something that uh, the respondent uh, said, no? Now, uh, I'll go back to the homepage. So, um, I am Ben Aprobongol, and I'm actually an applied mathematician uh, from the College of Engineering. And right now, my uh, very important supporter here is Professor Rosel Rivera of the College of Social Work and Community Development. Most of our respondents come from her college. So they're graduate students in social work and community development. Although this website was developed and maintained by undergrad students, uh, the current undergrad student is Mr. Arian uh, Valdez. Uh, he might be here. I told him to come uh, in case there are technical questions like uh, development of the website. And the previous student, the first batch, the first developers were uh, Wisan Concepcion and James uh, Abaha. And then last year, they just graduated, Nikki Fernandez and Carlo La Rosa. Arian is alone. Um, he has done um, a lot of work speeding up the website. And he has added this buttons here, ugly targets. Ugly means targets that have negative interactions. They have red edges coming uh, from them. If you click on our ugly targets, okay. 13.1, climate action seems to be a negative with the life below water. 
can I show the info? Okay, this was flagged as a negative three, but we could not see the reason. So I guess we have to go back. So uh, this shows you now, so ugly targets are those with negative. And uh, what we want to do is try to study uh, why it's negative and try to mitigate them. And uh, I think there are now 31 negatives. We are not finding too many negatives, maybe uh, less than 3% so far. Of the edges we have colored, uh, less than 3% are negative. And then uh, beautiful targets. These are the targets that have no negative impact. So they're all positive. No, and uh, well, you can see them here, industry innovation infrastructure. Well, so far, you see, of the fourteen thousand, we've followed only eleven 1 hundred so far. My data collection is very slow, but uh, well, this might change. Uh, we might have more negatives in the future. Uh, I, I'm not sure what uh, what the future will uh, give us, but. Uh, yeah, so uh, those are the things that are visible just from the landing page. Um, only the analysis here exclusively for the Philippines. Uh, if you have um, if you have Philippine experience, I can let you answer. We do require minimum of five years experience in the practice or study of sustainability and development issues. We may include years in graduate school. Now, yes, foreign respondents have always been allowed if the Philippines is one of their study or practice areas and you have at least five years experience, including the Philippine experience. Uh, does anyone, uh, any foreigner here uh, have Philippine experience? Um, no one, uh, because uh, I'll welcome you. I'd like you to uh, answer my, uh, my data collection website. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I can answer questions. Yes, any questions or you can write in the chat or you can also approach Vena for further uh, questions or any inquiries. I think it is so interesting. It is so interesting to understand these uh, inter uh, uh, connections and negatives and positives. And it is a learning tool for uh, students in university, as well as it is all about, uh, they are doing their own research on this and trying to address the negative ones. And that is takeaway here that we should be also uh, looking at the synergies, how to increase them to be more effective, whereas also to uh, decrease the negatives and decrease the impact. So thank you, Vena, very much. Uh, Vena, thank you. also looking to host uh, this uh, platform in another university, wherever, uh, probably in Europe, if someone is uh, want to collaborate uh, with her, and uh, she would be very happy to have some sort of uh, MOU or exchange students going there and teaching their students and so on, whatever it would be. So if you are interested in something, please approach Vena uh, or let me know, we can uh, discuss this. So thank you very much, Vena. Uh, I'm very pleased to have you here. Thank and you. now we have, Lars, Lars Engberg from Penetry Guardians, and he's giving, going to give us a talk. So let's, let us listen to him and it is your floor now. Thank you so much, Dr. Renuka. I'm really honored and pleased to be part of this panel. I think the network is, uh, is important. I think it's very cool. I was, in, uh, I was an, a scholar for 20 years in the Danish Building Research Institute and uh, then this idea of planetary guardians came to me. Uh, we all know that the planet is not doing well. We live in the age of the sixth mass extinction. We know that the mean temperatures are going up and we look into uh, a scenario with uh, massive negative impacts to people. I believe the planet will be okay, but people will definitely, and they are now struggling with the situation. So. In Denmark, we have a new and uh, quite powerful focus on rewilding. 
uh, when we rewild, we give space to wild nature. This uh, preserves the habitats for the species, and it also binds uh, uh, carbon uh, effect, uh, which is important to the climate situation. So it's like a win-win. Uh, to rewild is quite easy, and uh, everyone can do it. You can rewild your own garden. You can work with your local community uh, spaces. You can work with with uh, all land areas, basically. Uh, so it's an obvious approach in this day and age. And and when this idea, Planetary Guardians, came to me, I I felt why well, why not build a startup, a social impact enterprise, connect with people, friends, and then uh, build a network of uh, projects and people connecting the dots to promote this uh, rewilding uh, pathway on the planet. And um, it has been quite an intense and very positive experience for me so far. Um, we also work with permaculture projects. You can actually uh, start from scratch on very barren land and then regrow nature. You can uh, promote a biodiverse agricultural practice that also feeds people, supports local communities and so on. These solutions are out there, they're working. So there's no reason why we should not engage in setting up uh, projects like that, stimulating the regrowing, the, the greenification of the land. Um, we work with different social impact enterprises, different agencies. We have a number of projects going on. We are very we're just a startup, very new. Uh, um, we focus also on cities. To in introduce nature into cities is a key. Uh, in Denmark, and particularly in Copenhagen, we, we have different uh, activities going on to, to care for local species in, in streets and, and, and also to change a little bit the mindset of people that instead of just looking at a city as a busy place for traffic and uh, people not really experiencing nature, we can flip that. And for instance, where I live, there is a kingfisher in the harbor. If you ever seen a kingfisher, it's a, it's a magical bird, uh, but people are too busy to really to realize and to focus on that. So as planetary guardians, we really sort of work to, to show that nature is, is such a wonderful place to hang and to care for and that we can actually uh, regrow wild nature. That's the basic of the, of the social impact enterprise. Um, we work with what we call dream hubs, which is a place to meet. It's a, green, it's a, it's a greenhouse, it's formed like a dome. We work with a, another Danish local startup uh, that produces these domes and we will use this uh, as a maker space. So we can use it as a greenhouse. We can also use it as a workspace. Um, and we are a community of people who have a lot of dreams, a lot of green projects. And we, we, we get together, we discuss them, we see the synergies between different projects. And then we uh, support each other in that process of building that. Specifically, we have two pilots, uh, one in Copenhagen that we are working with, and then one in Morocco. Um, you all know that the desertification is, uh, is a real and uh, deep issue on all continents. And it makes a lot of sense to, to work around these uh, greenification proje projects to, ma to make a collective impact strategy to regrow the land and to care for the oasis, to care for the local farmers and so on. So we are also very excited about uh, starting an activity in Morocco as a as a pilot, as a first step. Uh, obviously, we are, we are still a startup. We are just uh, taking our first baby steps in this. Um, and a part of that is also to invite uh, all of you guys to feel into whether this could be interesting or not in the activities that we do. We have a, a number of projects that are building and we will uh, develop the, the commercial, the business aspect in a new way that is uh, more cooperatively oriented uh, instead of a classical uh, equity approach. So we are very excited about this. We uh, feel that this is the time for building alliances across borders between different epistemic communities, between different uh, professional fields, 
and to really get to know each other and to become friends in that activity, basically. And uh, it's easy once you feel that and do that. We have uh, people engaging in projects with the Jaguars. Uh, we also look at uh, different ways nature can provide more services to people, but in a non-exploitative way. Uh, when you eat local produce, you will be surprised how healthy it is and how far you get compared to chemistry and so on. So nature is basically the essence of what we do as planetary guardian, guardians to promote uh, the regrow of nature. Um, it's a really cool idea that to invite for this role idea that uh, as, a, as a person on, uh, on the planet, walking the planet, we, we also feel the entirety of the planet. We also think about and feel how is it going in other parts of the world. And uh, as expanding that consciousness and, in, and in incorporating this into our daily activities, it's quite easy to use social media to build uh, uh, like this conversation, for instance, and make that work in practical terms. So basically, uh, I'm very, very happy to be allowed to share this. And um, if you are interested, please connect with me, connect with us. It's, uh, it's basically just exploring how can we collaborate? What can we do together? And when we as a business uh, start for real, we will support also the, uh, the uh, academic activities and the network activities between different groups caring for a, a decent implementation of the new agenda. Uh, we all care for this. I think I would finally say that I think that the, the uh, biodiversity issue is undervalued in the SDG framework. Um, I think that uh, people do, are not aware how important the biodiversity, biodiversity criteria criterion is in, in the implementation of the strategies. There's the tendency that we take nature for granted, focusing on nature-based services, uh, as if nature was only invented for the, for the purpose of uh, us using nature. We want to give service to nature and flip that mentality and open up the awareness on, on uh, the, the magical uh, situation that we live on a living planet. And uh, yeah, we, we think it's quite uh, hands-on and quite easy to think like that. You can see a more specific uh, introduction to what we do. I shared a brief handout on the, um, on the WhatsApp group. And there, there's a link to a presentation I gave uh, a friend of mine, Abid Mehmood from Cardiff, was uh, chairing a very interesting uh, panel um, on uh, nature and the built environment. And on the panel was also a new friend of mine, uh, the founder of the Green Party in Pakistan. So we are slowly building these connects between people, feeling how we can uh, develop parallel processes and basically support, support each other as you are doing uh, Renuka and all of you guys. So uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's uh, continue this. I'm all about that. So thanks a million for, for allowing me to present this here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um... It is, it is an honor to have you here. And you have uh, touched uh, to many, many important things here. And uh, just now this conference, our conference, though it is very small, but it is very important again, because it is going along many other conferences in the world, which are very important. Just as U UNFCCC, then SRI, and Whenever I approached everyone, they are saying, oh, we are very busy. We are very busy. And during this, I'm also very busy, actually. I'm also attending uh, UNFCCC as observer because I've, I'm there for the first time this year. And then I am, I've been selected as an early career champion for SRI 2020. And my theme is integrated actions for SDG. And I made, met two pioneers in this theme who have already written several reports for IPCC and so on. And these are the points which you just now mentioned are the emerging points. Emerging points, nature-based solutions are the most, most important. And also 
we are all focused on our individuality. Yeah. It could be individual person, it could be individual discipline, it could be individual institution, it could be individual countries. But we should be looking at synergies, how we can do collectively, because collectively we have a bigger problem and also a bigger solution in the sense of easier solution if we connect it with each other. Yes. That, that is very, very important to connect. And and especially, especially from global south and global north, we need to connect and we need to understand each other's problems and also offer them whatever the support we can get from each other. Because now we also know that indigenous knowledge is also very important. And we have those things in global south and many other countries where we, we do not uh, take advantage of. And therefore, these are all very uh, important points and talks. So thank you very much, Lars, for your time today. So I will move on. And so now we, I invite uh, Dr. Francio Santos to talk about her uh, theme and conference, which is coming uh, soon. So the floor over, uh, it is, uh, please take the floor, Francia. Thank you so much, Dr. Reduca, for inviting me here. So it's really a great honor for me to uh, be one of the members of this uh, powerful and amazing a global sustainable futures network. So may I share now my screen? Yes, please. Okay, so this one is uh, really a great project. Baliwag University on its celebration. It, it's now uh, about to celebrate the 96th founding anniversary this coming August uh, 5. So we spearhead uh, this international virtual research conference in cooperation with the uh, Universitas Multimedia Nizantara and Executive Council of Deans and educators in business. So by the way, uh, UMN is a university in Indonesia. So uh, further negotiations about, uh, about the partnership uh, will proceed this coming week. And so um, we are really grateful for this because all of the keynote speakers and plenary speakers are actually coming from this network. So our first uh, keynote speaker, she'll talk about leadership in education essentials for sustainable futures. She's none other than the founder of the Global Sustainable Futures Network, Dr. Renuka Thakore. Our next speaker uh, is the Assistant Professor of Sustainability uh, from the International College to High University, Taichung, Taiwan. So it's going to talk about ecological system services and breaking boundaries, what it means to environmental resilience in times of COVID-19. Next plenary speaker uh, will be talking about innovation in education systems in both public and private uh, organizations struggles amidst the fight against pandemic. So these are all very interesting uh, themes. Next is Dr. Ernesto O. Cordero from the University St. Paul uh, in Ottawa. So his topic is entitled Planting the Seeds of Gratitude for Sustainable CSR and Quality of Life. Finally, we have Dr. Peter Waweru Wamai of Kenyatta University from Kenya. His uh, study is entitled Sustainability of Urban and Peri-Urban Ecosystems, a Social-Ecological Perspective. So with that, um, I would like to thank all of the research enthusiasts from this 
network because uh, they are really supporting the International Virtual Research Conference happening on August 5 and August 6. So thank you very much. Maraming salamat po. So with that, uh, may I ask also Dr. Renuka permission permission to uh, use the badge because all of the speakers are coming from this network. Will it, will it be okay if we can um, Yes, you can the use the badge. Global sustainable. You can use the badge. You can use the flyers. You can ask me. Please write me an email and I will forward you all the things. Thank you so much. Here in the Philippines, we're celebrating our Independence Day. Yes, you mentioned that. And congratulations for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. This conference is very important and uh, we all can make it work. We can enrich it with sharing our knowledge here. So you all are welcome to put your papers, your publications, posters, whatever you think talks, and uh, just be ready to uh, talk to the world, I think. So thank you very much for uh, giving this presentation and uh, telling us about your call. Thank you. So now we have Professor Ernesto Cordero, our most enthusiastic coordinator. Yes, and he is, he's going to talk about his paper. So I will stop sharing and I will give the floor to him. Good day, welcome and thank you. Uh, um, Ernesto, you can you hear me? the second, uh, second monitor, uh, share the other one. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, Stop sharing and uh, because you have put it in the presentation form. Oh, sorry, yeah. Do you have one or two computers? I have two. Uh, okay, sorry. Then, then you should share the other screen. Can you see it now? Yes. However, you can carry on uh, probably because we are still sh uh, seeing the present uh, presenter mode. So that is, we can see the slide and the next slide as well. Oh, sorry, sorry. Can I can I uh, do it uh, later on? Uh, can somebody uh, go ahead from my end because I'm using two computers, sorry. Okay, not to worry, we'll give you some time. We will carry on. Yeah, sorry. You can stop sharing here first and then we, I can carry on. Can I make a suggestion on what you can do?
Okay. Yes, someone asked me something. Yeah, you just need to click on the display setting and swap the display. Sorry, I don't understand, but we can carry on. We'll give him time. Okay. So now I will invite Ehuni Chitonos. I'm very sorry for my pronunciation. Eugenia Kopitsa to uh, present their uh, presentation on invitation to the fifth Kharkiv International Legal Forum. So please take the floor and present your presentation. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, thank you, dear Renuka. Thank you, dear friends. Uh, I, with uh, my colleague Evgenia Kapitsa, we are glad to see you and uh, to be a uh, so important uh, event. Uh, congratulate you with your uh, semi year celebration it's very important mission and uh, it is so good secondly uh, we want to invite you to ukraine because ukraine is very a beautiful country uh, kharkiv kiev uh, lviv uh, Dnipro, and other cities are very beautiful so welcome to ukraine and finally we want to present uh, our interesting and useful uh, event and uh, uh, about it um, I can talk my colleague Evgenia Kapitsa uh, Evgenia Mag please share uh, ako nag, nag ano hi everyone sounds a little bit that somebody is on but I will take my word so thank you Evgeny uh you know like he is showing you on the background the beauty of ukraine so greetings from ukraine that's true it's like we are eagerly waiting for you to come and uh, like i would explain why we're here uh so my name is evgenia kapitsa and i'm an associate professor of the department of environmental law yaroslav mudri national law university and i will be speaking on behalf of our university and environmental law department First of all, again, I share congratulations on your half yearly celebration. We believe that this network is very important in achieving and ensuring sustainable development. And uh, it is very close to us as far as we are environmental law department. And it is a great honor for us to be the part of the team that carries out such an important mission. So thank you one more time. And while we're here, and as Evgeny has already presented, we would like to announce and invite you to our significant event. Our university, Yaroslav Mudri National Law University that is based in Kharkov, organized the fifth Kharkov International Legal Forum. The date of the event is focused on September from 21st to 25th this year, 2021, and it will be held in a hybrid format, integrated online foreign speakers into offline in-person sessions to be held in Kharkov, Ukraine. The Legal Forum, it's a large scale annual event that is attended by lawyers, politicians, practitioners, scholars for more than 30 countries from around the world. Its main idea actually is to highlight uh, and discuss the pressing global problems of the modern world and to find ways to develop and to improve economic, social and legal institutions. But we, are, we would like you to invite to our part of the forum. It is the panel discussion, and it is devoted to the topic of environmental and legal aspects of sustainable development. The topic is actually quite broad and may include any relevant theoretical and practical legal issues in this area. It can include environmental protection, rational use of natural resources, biodiversity conservation, climate change, environmental safety, atomic energy, alternative energies, waste management, like everything that falls under the topic of sustainable development. We are really glad to, 
invite you to participate in our forum. Uh, dear Renuka has already kindly agreed to take part in it. So please let us know if you're interested in forum participation and what topics you would like to speak on within the panel discussion on environmental and legal aspects of sustainable development. An official invitation to the forum, as well as uh, all of the detailed information about the exact dates, participants, presentation format will be provided to you personally a little bit later after you confirm your participation. So please have a look at the promo video of the forum in this chat. I would add it here and in WhatsApp group, as well as our context will be presented there. And we are eagerly looking forward to your participation and our further fruitful cooperation. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Please tell your thank name you. please, you. for us. Uh, we are both Evgenias, but in a different way. I'm a girl, <laughs> Evgenia, and my colleague, the head of our environmental law department is a man, Evgeny. <laughs> Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure thank, to have you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank it is you. a great pleasure to have you. And uh, yes, uh, please send me all the details and uh, your WhatsApp uh, uh, introductory um, video and all other things. We will spread the word and we will definitely be happy to contribute to you with your you. event. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Yes, so I believe now Ernesto is ready. Okay, can you see it now, Renuka? Yes, we are having the same problem, but I won't worry now. Just carry on. And uh, also uh, uh, stick to us very, uh, yes, now it is brilliant. Also, Anna, yeah. uh, I, I saw that you have 56 slides. So please just oh. uh, focus on yeah, yeah. a few main <laughs> things, okay? <laughs> I was a bit worried. Probably I would be sitting here until you. <laughs> yeah, I really put all my slides, so, but... Uh, before that, uh, it's just a quick icebreaker to do quick comment of Karik Stennis to brighten up and focus us on our discussion. I'm bringing up, um, an S we are talking about a lot of SDGs and uh, now we will focus on one aspect on SGD3, which is the well-being and the quality of life as experienced by the farmers in the banana plantation. Probably your breakfast must be connected to my topic. Did you know that Dole and Del Monte Brands and other multinational fruit companies are operating huge plantation in the Philippines where also agricultural communities thrive? So uh, probably the first question is, what do we know about people living within a community in the agricultural farm? I want to end the... Uh, analysis to paralysis and really go to the main issue of the quality of life and uh, their well-being inside the farm community. So I'll just give you the abstract, which I have only six slides, don't worry. The study I uh, sought um, to determine the sustainable CSR being implemented and the quality of life of the community within the plantation. Due to limitation, I will dwell on the synopsis of the study to catch up with our time constraints by just presenting the abstract. So it, uh, we will, I will just like to sh um, show you the effects on the beneficiaries' quality of life and the study subject is around 400 beneficiaries of the uh, Filipino Banana Growers and Exporter Association in the Southern Philippines. The, you know that uh, uh, the findings reveal that uh, CSR activities have a moderate uh, implemented as a moderate extent um, 
quality of life regarding life satisfaction sa various condi- condition were reasonably satisfied. And uh, economic, social, and cultural were not stati- statistically significant. However, environmental factors significant, significantly influenced the community's quality of life. So may, we, we will be asking uh, that uh, environment is a big factor. Probably we'll be asking why. Well, that is another study to pursue. My guess is like my, ex- my existing study on the well-being of people of Canada in their ancestral domain. Their life is mainly, based on my guess, focus in the, their focus in the, is in on, on the preservation of the environment and almost sacred with great respect. I, Now we'll we'll go to the nitty gritty of the study. As I said earlier, the subjects were 400 uh, banana growers, a worker. The ethnicity is this um, from uh, locally 51%, and uh, the rest are from different parts of the country. Um, more than majority lives in the community. School completion and their work status are discussed as well. And in the overall extent of implementing the CSR activities, we can see that if we lump sum all, all in and run the regression model, we will get a moderate extent for all the factors, um, economic, social, cultural, and environmental. But uh, um, the quality of life of beneficiary in all factors various condition, life satisfaction, health and safety, the overall uh, extent of CSR implementation is satisfactory. But when we run the, the regression analysis independently, the environmental model give a significant remarks um, and the results showed only the environmental factor significantly influenced the quality of life of the banana growers. This is where the contention I am saying that the uh, farmers or agricultural farmers really respect the environment factor. And th- that's their way of life, I think. And uh, recently I, I saw three studies that confirms the same uh, uh, findings as I presented earlier. So with that, we consider the uh, findings and conclusion of the study, and uh, we we give uh, six uh, recommendations and suggested. And after that, we also give the or propose strategic approaches in in further enhancing the CSR program, and we propose a strategic approach in, in enhancing the implementation of CSR. And so we have planned uh, the first eight, the green alternatives, the video productions for learnings, organizing and launching the Yes Earth, the Young Environmentalist Saving Earth, the Activity Nest or the or the awarding of innovative um, environmental uh, initiative and saving saving the environment, soil conservation, going organic, and leadership training for the community. Thank you for now. Before I proceed for another 55 uh, slides that I have here. So, um, mercy. Rachi, arigato, sheshe, the danjava, the sante, obrigado, obrigada, gracias. And finally, salamat. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ernesto. If anyone have any questions, can they can ask or if they can put in chat or get in contact with uh, Ernesto. Uh, and thank you, thank you for raising this environmental factor is very significant, and I think it is. And uh, if we are able to address and give some uh, uh, 
effective uh, approaches, then probably we will be also winning on economic and social and other aspects as well. So thank you very much. Here, William Astane has his hand up. So yes, please. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Luca. And uh, sorry for joining late. I can't um, hear you. Good. Um, I want to find out uh, if that were very significant. Uh, how did you operationalize the environmental factors? What What goes into environmental factors? What do you mean by that? When you say environmental factors, what does it, you know, encapsulate? Okay, thank you very much. I think that's what I want to say. Okay. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll send you some, uh, the details of the study probably on a more comprehensive one. So, Billy, can I call you Billy William? So, yeah. Um, and we'll correspond accordingly. I didn't get yes. the whole question, actually. Uh, okay. He was asking about the factors uh, which encompass the environmental whole issue, environmental. So he was asking about what, what sub-factors encompassed environmental component. However, it is... Yeah that you can exchange uh, your uh, uh, information uh, because it, I, I believe it would be too uh, uh, detailed. Detailed, yeah. Details, so yes. And it will consume a lot of time, but it's Not part of the questionnaires, yeah. Yeah, thank uh, you very much. The, uh, thank you, Williams. William, and thank you, Ernesto. Thank you, William. Right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Now let us move on. And here we have coordinator's response. We asked you last month that, what do you feel about the, why are you here? What do you feel and what you want to see? And so we have got several responses and I'm so pleased to have all these responses. One response is also very interesting, which you will come across. So let us see um, here. Let me see if I can play. I joined this network because my company, the New Urbanism Planners and Designers, intends to be an international organization. And this network gives me experience in knowledge sharing and research skills. Uh, for beginners, this network of 75 countries helps in establishing this goal. Uh, this network brings in so many avenues to achieve sustainability that I feel lost in the sea of knowledge. My short-term goal is in this network is to get exposure to the research skills and apply them in practice. Also looking for opportunities in live projects. My long-term goal is to get into managerial position and contribute to this network on a much broader scale. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, actually, I have uh, put all the slides according to when I received them, okay? So I must thank Ashish especially because he was the first one to send me this slide, this video. So next is... Hello everyone, Bonilla my name is Santos. Manuel Santos and I'm a professor at Western Paraná State University. It's a pleasure to be part of this team. The reason for joining this network is the possibility to contribute with knowledge creation and promote change. This is a place to meet researchers and people who share the same ideas of a better education and world. I feel that I am a part of a big movement of mutual collaboration to promote advance in sustainability and resilience. My part on this network is to collaborate in different projects and in time to propose some projects too. Thank you for the opportunity. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Manola. Hello. And here, David Quans, he is a very, very uh, interesting person. 
he engages with the network very much, but he never attends the meeting only because he, he the time zone never fits in. And that's the problem. And therefore he just put this out on a slide to us. He's engaged in the projects, in publications and so much like he's engaged in all the activities. So he has told that I joined the network because my goal is to make a positive contribution to the world. And I think that generally effectiveness is improved when working with others with shared goals. So thank you very much, David. And here we have very enthusiastic coordinator, Rosini Luciana de La Riva from Brazil. And let me play. Olá, eu sou a Rosilene Luciana de La Riva, sou bióloga e doutora em ciências ambientais. Trabalho na Unioeste, Universidade Estadual do Oeste do Paraná, no Brasil. Eu me uni a esta rede porque busco trocar experiências e olhar para inovações e soluções para problemas comuns. Construir engajamento para disseminar soluções sustentáveis. Também aprender sobre diferentes realidades educacionais no mundo. Participar na redação de artigos e criar parcerias para financiamento de pesquisas sobre um mundo mais sustentável. Estou muito feliz por me unir a esta rede e participar desses trabalhos. Thank you, Rosini. Thank you very much. And here, I, I would say she has set an example that even if you don't know English, you can participate in any conversation. And that is what I'm looking from you. Please do not hesitate yourself just because of not knowing English, okay? Hola. And here, Imran Safik Ansari, and he has given me a slide. I don't know if he's present here, but he, he is also very enthusiastic and he has been with us since the start of the network. The network provides me home for pedagogical research and advancements while being able to publish and hopefully work together, establishing attracting funds in the longer run. So yes, definitely we are all looking for this uh, future. So thank you very much Imran for giving us these words. And Jose, Jose is here. Uh, is he here? No, sorry, Jose Casimir uh, Alarmco. He is again, as I said, he was a bit critic also. And I like this. He said, I don't, uh, he, I should not uh, include his feedback in the presentation because it is a critic as well, but I like it. And I wanted to, show that some of the members are also willing to have a better engagement between Global South and Global North. And that is what we are here for. And so we must all take up our, uh, you know, initiatives to engage with people. And that is what he is saying. So why did he join to keep up to update to the latest knowledge in sustainability and education and to collaboration in research projects, papers, et cetera, to share my research in the area and so on. But how he's feeling, he, my area of research is sustainable, eco, circular product design. So although this network is related, it is not directly related. This is why I am not more active in the network. Fair enough. However, sometimes when I have time, I will check the seminars and the news from the network to learn more insight. I think we all think this way. The new problem with being parts of the network is to find time to contribute, and this applies to all the networks I know. The most successful networks are the networks that offer a lot and demands less time from their members. I also feel that this network is more focused on developing countries which I think may deter some good academics to contribute and spend their time to collaborate in, uh, collaborate in projects. This is the lack of representation from top scholars and top universities in UK, EU, and US. So thank you for showing us where we need to focus now and where, whom we should engage with. And as you have seen in the network uh, profile that we have 
coordinators from Europe and Global South and Global North, probably equally, not many, but in few countries, yes, we have some uh, for concentrated people uh, like coming from uh, one country or so, but it is natural, isn't it? If you spread the word and if they think that this is uh, very much what they want, then it is uh, very natural to attract people from the same country or the same region. So uh, this is what he's saying. And then he says that I think a good way forward would be link this network with established ne network led to top scholars in the area of sustainability and circularity to join forces with them. For example, he has given IS4CE and similar societies. And exactly, I took his advice and I went out and uh, had some global connections. Uh, however, I've not been able to still go to this uh, particular one, but we will be approaching. So please, I would say, this is your network. Take your own initiative to how to shape, how, what you want to shape, how to shape, and you go out and engage with the people. And uh, I think we will be more flourishing and more enriching our network like that. And here we have Paulus uh, D. Ban. He is present here, but he has sent us a recording as well. So I will play the recording. What do you want to do, Paula, Paulus? Uh, probably uh, he is not here. So I will just play his uh, recording. Thank you to Dr. Renu Tatakur for conducting this event and providing a change for me, one of the global sustainable future network social media champions to introduce myself. I also would like to express my gratitude to all of the participants who may need the sign for attending our special events. I'm interested in engaging in this network since I find various relevance related to my job as a teacher of English as a foreign language. In doing the job, I frequently find my students struggling to adapt their professional lives and personal lives to SDGs. In addition, the globally current situation of the COVID-19 pandemic and upcoming event of COP26 possibly can change the direction of lives. Being engaged within this network, I expect any opportunity to exchange ideas of integrating and implementing the world SDGs through a resilient curriculum of learning English in this very unprecedented world environment. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I think the sound was a bit low, but he has already spoken earlier. So thank you, Paulin, to the Paulus to send us this. Thank you to the and here we have uh, Francia. Hello everyone, the world calls for us to be accountable for the global challenges, which could not be addressed by just one person, organization, or a nation. Truly honored to join the force of the Global Sustainable Futures Network, who aims to transform the global society through synergized partnership and collaboration. Wishing for this professional network of researchers around the world to be blessed and achieve great success. Thank you and more power. Hello everyone. Thank you. And then we have Ernesto and I think we have already uh, heard from him several times. And he says that he is, it is an honor to be a unique organization, to be part of unique organizations called Global Sustainable Futures. And it is one of the tremendous help in the field of academic research and environmental sustainability. The noble purpose to be in the forefront to call for action is to preserve life, sustain our nature and present, uh, preserve our ecology for future generations. In our small action in responding to and complying with these challenges, it is time for global collaboration and action by those who have comment, uh, committed and live in its purpose and advocacy for our mother uh, nature. Long live. So thank you very much, Ernesto, for being with us. And here we have Felix uh, Kavamena Donker. I don't know if he is here present. Would you like, Felix, if you are present here, would you like to speak?
Not to worry, he has said, I want to thank the founder of the Strides Project because he is quite in, 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 uh, involved in Strides Project. So he, I think he has mistaken that. Uh, however, it's wonderful members. So it is a platform that has facilitated interactions across disciplines and generations of researchers. And this is very unique and impactful and I cherish our engagement. So thank you very much, Felix. And then Andre, he is a very interesting person. He is a very, very renowned scientist, and he, uh, he is an author in IPCC and many, many high-level uh, publications. And uh, he is from Brazil. It's just that he cannot engage with us because he do not have an instrument to speak due to the lockdown. And therefore, he is saying, these meetings are vital for discussion, commitments, analysis, synthesis, the debate, coordination, and appraisal of the different tasks regarding the many problem of difficult settlement in the world. And thank you for sending me the link to participate in the meeting. Please note that my participation will be mute since I was unable to get the necessary equipment to speak due to the lockdown. So thank you, Andre, for being with us and we always uh, respect to your seniority and look for your support. Thank you. Hello, I'm Esther Uzo, a lecturer with the University of Calabar, Nigeria, a state coordinator for the Forum of African Women Educationalists in Nigeria, as well as a member of the International Development Research Center, IDRC on Women in STEM. I joined this network because of research and my love for research. So far, the journey has been great and impactful. It has been educative, enlightening, and informative. And for the way, on the way forward, I believe collaboratively doing research will help me to sharpen my skills professionally and also add value to the growth and impact of these global sustainable futures as a coordinator, as well as also carrying the youth along. This will help us a great deal. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Uh, she has recently joined just a month or two uh, before, but she has been engaging with all of our activities. So thank you very much. And here are the Ayodhiji, uh, Sunday Agulene. I think he is present here and he said he will speak with his slide. Are you ready? Yes, thank you very much, um, Dr. Rinuka. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon from Nigeria. I'm happy to be part of this uh, network. It's been a, a wonderful experience being here. And uh, quickly, I would like to uh, talk on um, the opportunities that we get when we attend um, conferences. Um, Dr. Rinika asked me if I would like to you know, talk on this slide because it was shared on our platform. And um, the first thing I want to say is that I believe that we are all researchers you know, from different brain fields, which makes this a, a more robust um, platform for us. Uh, former meetings that put together people of uh, the same interest or concerned interest is what we call conferences. And when we attend conference, is an opportunity to several other things that are going to follow. For instance, now I have in my slide that when you go for conferences, you know, it affords you the opportunity to go travel around cities, places that you have not been to. You go there, you see things that you have not seen. You will entertain with cultures, with people from different backgrounds. It's an opportunity for you when anytime you attend an academic conference. Also, when you go for a research conference, an academic conference, it also affords you an opportunity to meet with your peers in the field where you're going to receive valuable feedback. For instance, you have done a research in your locality or your country. It's an opportunity for you to present the results to colleagues in the same field where you can get valuable input into your research. And that will further you know, open your eyes to probably the aspect that you have not seen while you were doing the research. The other thing you get is that you develop a communication skill. You know, recently, I heard about the word verbal confidence. And I've been trying to, to learn on that. But when you go for conferences, you have to start in front of people, thousands of people, however small, 
you develop how to communicate. And if you find out that you are not a good communicator, that can also influence you to learn more about communication, effective communication. Also, you build network with fellow researchers from different, different professional backgrounds. You know, I, I wish this conference is holding on ground. Uh, Dr. Renuka, I, I look forward to a time in the future that we, the GFS conference, you know, we invite us to a venue, maybe in the future in UK or Europe, where we, we come together, we build network. The other things that you gain when you go for conferences, academic conferences, that you stay abreast of the latest thing, the trending matters in your field. For instance, I read a great economies, and each time we go for conferences, you know, you get the latest thing, the, 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 the latest issue that is going on in your field. And that way, you are not too far from your peers, your colleagues okay. around the world. You can always follow. The other thing is that you get to learn about different opinions, exchange of opinions, you know, exchange of what is happening in academia, okay? You no, know, thank God for this uh, new normal that we are going through, the pandemic and everything. There are lots of ideas that could be shared that you could learn from on how to proceed, how to do your own thing better and get uh, a very good uh, household or outcome as the case may be. You also find an opportunity to collaborate with people. You know, part of the things that I have enjoyed on this platform is when I see people posting different opportunities you know, on our platform on WhatsApp, some of them I quickly go on Google, I get them and apply for them. You know, when you meet in conference, you see opportunity to collaborate with people, especially when you're looking at you know, cross-disciplinary uh, uh, collaboration, conferences could afford that. And the last thing I want to see here, you see, you see inspiration. You know, when you go for conferences, you see inspiration, you see people that have gone ahead of you in your field, you see achievement. I remember I was in Atlanta 2019, and that was the first um, uh, conference of agroeconomics, American Association of Agroeconomics that I attended. When I go there, I told my colleagues there in Nigeria, I said some of the names that we see in books, I saw them walking on two legs. It was interesting and it was very, very inspiring. So I think we should look for more opportunities to attend conferences in our various field. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rinka, for having me. Thank you everyone for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You have raised very, very important points, uh, which I would like everyone should take on board. And thank you very much. It is inspiring. And it is also uh, highlighting a very adva good advantages of conference. Thank you very much. And now we have my uh, Michael Kuba. Uh, is he, are you present here, Michael? Probably he's not present here and that's why he sent me the last uh, moment slide. He's saying that he joined network. Yes, hello. Oh yes, are you here? Yes, I'm somewhere where it's noisy, but um, I can briefly say. Yes, please. Yes. That oh, I came to join this particular. Okay, let me get where it's less noisy. I'll be brief. Hello. Yes, yes, carry okay. on. Um, uh, I'm. We have lost you. I think we have lost him. So yes, he's saying that to have interactions with scholars across the world to increase opportunities for joint research collaborations. And he's saying benefits of this network are a good platform to discuss SDGs and climate change, a good platform to participate in global discussions. He is already taking part in Global British Council Conference under Strides Banner with me. And, uh, and uh, Dr. Jose, he is also present now here. So I will uh, uh, invite him just after this slide to speak. Gain the knowledge on topics like system thinking, various SDG goals, get to know opportunities for scholars and early career researchers. 
And he warns that how we should progress is implementing a collaborative activities like journal publications and having discussions on relevant topics such as sustainability and climate change, et cetera. So thank you very much. And now, before going to this vision, I, I have uh, noticed that Dr. Jose is now present here from Brazil, and I will welcome him to talk about one minute about this network, as well as his involvement as a LinkedIn champion. The floor is yours. Why, hello, everyone. Um, hope to find you all very well and safe. Um, I'm, I'm sorry for my face uh, that it's not beautiful as usual, but yesterday I got my shot of the COVID-19 vaccine here in Brazil. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad to share this new, um, but I have uh, I like a hangover with the side effects during the night. Um, but um, uh, this, is, this, is, this is just uh, something very small compared to the benefits of having this shot. So let's uh, look forward for the second one. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Renuka, for allowing me to be here. Um, I believe I, I have a very uh, simple thing to, to ref just came as a reflection to share with my fellow colleagues in this network is that we have uh, really accomplished to arrive in this uh, mid-year conference uh, like more than professors, experts and, and researchers in sustainable futures. Uh, we, are, we are here this morning or this afternoon uh, gathering together uh, as a loud voice uh, to discuss and as a working force to build the bridges of a more reliable mindset change. That's my really heart belief. Uh, this, uh, this will be uh, both uh, like a, a mission and our legacy for the younger generations, especially in these uh, complex COVID-19 uh, pandemic times where the impacts of our relationship with climate and environment shall be um, like redesigned to overcome the, our key challenges that are increasing inequality and of course affecting our status as human beings as we uh, all can imagine. Um, Brazil unfortunately is a reference of bad things uh, uh, to react in the pandemic time. Um, if resilience arrives, as uh, I used to say, as a motor for our existence, we uh, have to foster the connectivity with education, with inclusion, with transparency, with diversity, in order to, uh, let's say, overcome our ordinary ongoing paces, like I I used to say too, and be successful in, in this journey. We, we shall not fail to this. Uh, we do not have another planet art to call home. So um, thank you very much, really, uh, for being part of this. I have uh, made this um, a very small uh, one minute video uh, that I have uploaded and I have shared the link with you in our in our chat room uh, that I have uploaded to YouTube because uh, it shows a little bit in one minute how we have accomplished really as a network. I have been um, experiencing and 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 I have been delighted with the possibility of this interaction in many battlefronts that start with my all uh, postdoctoral uh, research. I am a visiting professor at uh, Pontificia Universidade Católica do Paraná here in Brazil. Uh, and I'm doing my uh, postdoctoral research in innovation for uh, sustainable organizations. And um, I have been discussing a lot uh, uh, about not only the SDGs, but the, what uh, SDGs are uh, boosting in terms of this uh, frameworks that we have got in the world and that we have tracked since that uh, 1972 uh, 
an international meeting in, in Sweden and in Stockholm. And, uh, and all the accomplishments uh, that we have uh, experienced to see uh, up to this moment where we are discussing the SDGs and what will move us forward to a sustainable future. So thank you very, very, very much for the opportunity of being here with you, sharing this. I am really an active, uh, I, I believe, uh, uh, member of this network because I have always uh, believed that uh, this uh, knowledge in, in these uh, complex times that we are really living in our societies. Of course, I can talk a little bit uh, better about the Brazilian society that I'm living in, but all you can talk a bit uh, better about your societies and in, in, in the countries that you live in. Uh, but we are experiencing very, very hard. And um, let's say, I, I don't like, to use the to quote like this, post-pandemic times, but I will take uh, this just to express that uh, everything that we have uh, knew in the past probably will have some kind of interference or some kind of uh, uh, a minor or a great uh, change uh, with the impacts that we have um, uh, saw during this uh, pandemic times. Uh, the complexity of the uh, environments that we are uh, and the dimensions that we are dealing with in our professional uh, practices are, are putting us uh, together in the place where we have always been. Um, that is, uh, we have to become uh, uh, fans of the science, fans, of the history, fans of the, of everything that has moved us to the moment we are in. So I am uh, really glad to share with you in this network because I have also have a channel, a live channel, to express a little bit about the truth of what is happening here. Yesterday, uh, uh, I had the opportunity to give a lecture in ESG, and uh, and this is the the framework that I am, I have been involved with and I'm working with my research too here in, in Brazil. And I, and, and, uh, and I, I got, I, I, I give a lecture about one hour and there is a lot of people uh, trying to uh, get involved with the lecture. And we have talked about uh, education. We have talked about uh, the situation in the environment. We have talked about the economy and everything. And I, I, I was almost censored because, you know, people had uploaded this lecture in the YouTube channel. And uh, half hour later, they have, uh, uh, they took off the, the video and they come to me to say, well, we are suffering pressure from the environmental minister, from, from people inside the education ministry, et cetera, because we have people that are working in these ministries and, he, and they have like applauded and, and, and cherished what you have said. But at the other hand, they, have, they, they start to be worried with people calling them and say, well, uh, how can you be involved with such thing? Uh, you know, it's completely different from our thoughts. And uh, so I, uh, well, I have born in the, in the December of 64. It's like a testimony that I'm giving to you. And now you all believe, uh, I believe that you all know what happened in the year of 64 here in Brazil, the start of our uh, military dictatorship. And um, in, I am the son of this dictatorship because I have born in December 64 and uh, they have a coup, a military coup in the end of March, beginning of April of this year. So not nine months later, I came in and I sh like a showcase. So I have lived all my life inside uh, um, the authoritarianism um, uh, under, under uh, you know, years of uh, a very hard, uh, moment of our history, lots of people that thought uh, a little bit 
uh, more with freedom uh, have gone, disappeared, have been killed. And so uh, I said, well, I have lived since I was a baby uh, in a moment where we do not have any democracy here in Brazil. How could I be afraid of the digital militias? I have based <laughs> um, the regular physical militias in the street. So um, this is just a, a highlight of what is going on. And hopefully here in Brazil, we will succeed in the next election in the year 2022 of not having this uh, happening again. And, and uh, of course, I am a, like a counterpoint. I am an oppositor of this uh, fascist and uh, thoughts of the present government that is destroying everything that we have built in the last two decades in terms of culture, in terms of education, public education. Public education is under siege here in Brazil, really. Um, they have dismantled the research uh, and, and from all the uh, postdoctoral and doctoral uh, projects that have been approved by the National Council, only 13% of these approved projects from Brazilian researchers will be funded. Uh, so uh, we, we, uh, we are facing a very hard, harsh situation. And um, I am standing against it, of course. So I count with you also, because this is an opportunity for all, uh, all of us to share. And I, am, I, I, and I thank uh, to God for my resilience, because I have said that I would not have any word cut it or edited from my speech and the integral video of my lecture with the questions and my comments at the bottom end can be also uh, seen by you uh, in YouTube and YouTube channel. It's, it's this whole video, not edited uh, and not uh, giving the, the, the sense that I'm just talking about a subject without uh, knowing what's uh, going on in our uh, ambience and our surroundings. So it's uh, also an invitation. I, I, I put a, a link of this YouTube video, of course, that I give this lecture in Portuguese, but uh, it will be nice for you uh, if you don't want to see a 45 minutes lecture about uh, ESG is sustainable and everything, but uh, you go to the, to the end and with the interactions of the audience, uh, I was explaining a little bit what kind of things we are facing here and why we have to move forward to get back our Brazil, as you all uh, probably joy uh, back again to us. And so thank you very much for this interaction. Thank you very much for your patience to hear that. And uh, you are all invited to to connect with me, of course, there are many battlefronts. I, I, pre I have prepared uh, this one minute video and there is a link also for you to see where I highlight uh, some of the accomplishments of being part of this network because I have uh, took with me the flag of this network for everything that I have done in the, in the, in the late year. And um, and there are some pr presentations to come. I'm very glad, that I'm very thankful for this opportunity also to join this future uh, events that will be uh, promoted in, through our network relationship. Thank you, Francia, for the invitation, Ernesto, and everyone that are also struggling to make this possible. And Dr. Renoka, you are the cement of this um, uh, building bridges that uh, we are capable to do with this uh, outstanding uh, network with your vigor, uh, with your reliable existence. You are really a, a quintessential person. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Jose. Thank you for touching the realities in the world. I think it is very, very important. While we all cherish the opportunities, we know that we are struggling, we are addressing the problems, real world problems. 
but it's also good to touch the realities. Yes, thank you very much for doing so. And also to be present here yourself, even when you are not so well. So thank you very much for taking this time and coming here. Thank you. And we look forward for a more engaging time with you. Thank you. So now we are having vision going forward. I know we are over two hours now, but we'll quickly go through the slides. And here Ernesto has been uh, thinking about how we should develop organize our organization. And would you like to take the floor, Ernesto? Do you have my slides already or I, I'll, I'll yeah. share my no, these are the slides which I have transferred here. Uh, okay. So can will I present now and you'll yes, just show please. the slide? Okay. Yes. So yes. Um, we had an informal, uh, informal, um, what do you call this, consultations with some of the coordinators who are invited to join us in a short meeting. And uh, we propose that we conduct a workshop to develop and agree on an annual work plan for the fiscal year 2021, 2022, and probably budget for the group, including agreeing on the specific action or items, or what's the next steps for its approval by the board of director. As a matter of fact, uh, Dr. Renuka as the organizer and the main person would uh, actually uh, uh, explore the possibility of uh, registering us as a, to have an, to be an entity in UK. And uh, through her generous and benevolent financial assistance personally, she will shoulder initially all the expenses for the group. And thank you for that. Next slide. And we are proposing, um, to have these following objectives in having a strategic plan for the fiscal year. First is to reflect on lessons learned and celebrate the group's achievements in early 2021, the, the, <clears throat> the journey that we took despite a challenging year of a global pandemic. And based on the current commitments, just like the stride, existing and newly approved projects, identify strategic initiatives and possible activities that could be prioritized as uh, contingency plans if the project in the pipeline do not materialize. Probably draft a high level annual plan of activities based on a target operational budget in addition to project funds and expected admin and management fees from relevant projects or membership fees. This we need to agree on, especially the membership fee, because Dr. Renuka would like it to be a non-membership um, fee group. And uh, if she can uh, afford it, she wants it a free organization for all. So depending on our agreement, uh, she will she initially suggested that uh, probably depending whether you belong to the first world country or the or developing countries, we will uh, explore our possibilities. But uh, Dr. Renuka, because of her generosity, would like it to be free. Okay, and uh, the fourth one is to identify and agree on proper project structures, working groups, whether it's an ad hoc board committee to manage and implement the different plans, projects, and special initiatives and then provide an opportunity to really um, formalize the setting up of uh, the board of directors, if ever we register, and uh, invite some coordinators to join in the board. Next slide, please. So we are expecting an output if we push through it before the end, uh, probably in the near future, a month or two. Applied year 20, 21 early lessons learned and leverage key achievements into the fiscal year 21, 2022 annual plan and develop a draft uh, 20, a fiscal year plan and budget that addresses the key current realities and prior priorities for the group. 
and then organize team structure around existing project, agreed priorities or strategic in initiatives. And the fourth one is agreed next step actions towards approval and implementation of the fiscal year plan and budget. And uh, it's still an open. We have to exchange ideas and balance participation to the process among existing members, coordinators, and probably new board of director members. So that's it for now, Dr. Rinuka, the output. And uh, do I still have? So yeah, so these are the output, so. Okay, uh, yes, thank you very much. However, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. However, having this all, our key focus, our key focus is, as we already mentioned, we have already uh, done initially, and I have already mentioned several times in our newsletters, that our key focus will be like mobilization and engagement. And especially in mobilization, I do not mean that just traveling, but these networking activities are also a part of mobilization. How would you meet so many people, even if you are in organizing uh, on a conference? I have never met so many people at one time in two hours time, uh, even in a conference, it is difficult. But here it is an opportunity to see, and I'm so glad we had today at, in our peak time, we had 40 coordinators joining us, which is 10% of our total coordinators. And that is brilliant. And uh, that is what I mean by mobilization and engagement and building a community of practice. We have heard everyone and everyone cherishes only one goal, a community that, is sustainable, okay? And that is what we want to build. And we want to build a community of practice in all the regions globally, even in your local region and everywhere. And creating a strong leadership and also producing a critical mass of good practices. So this focus always will remain there. And here now, finally, I am very excited to tell you about one new project which I want to uh, initiate. And this is just an idea when I got this idea yesterday only when I was talking to Ernesto. And uh, I, I thought I will put this idea out to you all and let us see how it goes. So first of all, this is sustainability champions. Now, champions does not mean that uh, uh, sustainability champions means I don't want anyone to uh, exclude here, okay? It is open for anyone, anyone who is one uh, part of our member uh, network. So first of all, if anyone wants to join this scheme or uh, say whatever you can say program scheme, then he has to be first the part of the network. Second, he will be trained as with sustainability criteria. And these sustainability criteria will be environmental, uh, ethical, uh, uh, procurement, sustainable procurement. And it could be uh, human resources if that is ethical and all that and health and safety. And you will also learn about global compact. You will also learn about nature-based solutions and many, many other things. There will be a range of training provided to you. And only one thing is very important in this project or uh, let us say scheme that one individual, whoever wants to come with us, or want to recruit themselves for this scheme will have to adopt an organization. And that organization can be from any, any, any discipline. It could be small, big, large organization, whatever. It could be its own uh, organization. It could be someone's organization. It could be local authority. It could be something, whatever. Uh, but he has to, he or she, not he, sorry, I don't want to be sexiest. And yes, before going to that, I want 60 participants to join this scheme, 30 female, 30 uh, male. 
and of any age, of any region, of any country. And uh, I want uh, them to adopt any organization depending on their local uh, context. And they will be taught all these. And why we want to ad adopt the conf organization? Because this knowledge, they have to implement in that organization. And at the end of the scheme, they have to show that they have been done, uh, they have done some good job for that organization and for themselves. And that is how we will increase their leadership. And they will uh, become a leader, uh, the individual and the organization. And we will award you some sort of accreditation that time at the end of the scheme, which would be December, 2022. So this one and a half year, we want you to join this scheme. And once I receive your interest, I will frame out for the details, this is just an idea which I've got yesterday and I'm rolling out to you today. And that's why I will look out for your interest and we will see how we go. Again, as I already mentioned, I want this scheme to be free, but I don't know how to manage. And even if I'm taking some charges, it will definitely depend on the countries from where you are coming from, low income, medium income, and high income countries and all sort of things will be uh, taken care of. So don't uh, uh, say, uh, reduce yourself by saying that, uh, oh, I cannot take part because I do not have this or that or anything like that. So I am looking forward for your interest and email me directly for this. Once I receive this interest, and by the end of this month, I will frame out a program. So thank you very much for listening to that. And here I have uh, taken, uh, or I can, I can say I was still to hear Ernesto's slide saying thank you to all of you. And finally, you have my email address. And this one, uh, below my email address, you have uh, our website. So yes, we have Dr. Enuka, uh, it's uh, if my if I may add um, just for the information of everyone, the the one the the, the last project presented by Dr. Enuka, uh, actually Dr. Enuka is a certified auditor of sustainability. And what we explore was uh, the possibility of um, the members of this uh, organization to be a future auditor also. And she is certified to certify us and uh, help us in, in dealing with this. So it's a nice uh, uh, initiative for these uh, people. So probably we're asking what's in it for me for joining this. And this is the very nice answer or response to us. We. I know you are very noble in your objective in joining this particular organization, but being an auditor on sustainability will give us an opportunity to really practice and share our expertise. So I'm really um, uh, pushing for the Dr. Renuka to implement the, the course that she is in mind and underwent during her professional days. Thank you, Dr. Renuka. And good Thank luck you. to your noble Thank you idea. very much. Thank you. And I will put into the gallery view and take, if you want to all open your uh, videos, I will take one or two pictures and then we can stop recording and then we can. So please open your videos if you are permitted and if you want to go for the picture. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. One, two, and three.
All taken. Now second screen. Yes, all done. I will stop the recording. Okay. Cool.